Hello everyone and welcome to the final part of the tier list series. Today we are going to be ranking every stage. Keep in mind that like with everything else, this is zones only for a competitive environment. If you like all modes, then some of this will still apply, obviously, but I think it's a bit better to rank in this case. So let's just dip right into it and take care of this last part. All right, so this tier list will be completely in order. So I'm gonna go from stage 22 all the way to stage number one. And I think the absolute worst map in the entire game is Eeltail Alley. I think Eeltail Alley has a few factors that are some of the worst in the game. The spawn region is pretty horrible. The part all the way in your spawn doesn't seem too bad, but you basically only have one-way drops to get to the area to contest bridge. Then you have to walk up and deal with the bridge. The easiest lockout in the entire game, then get through the bridge, to paint the largest splat zone in the game that is the most annoying one to cap and then do that all over again. It is a miserable flow of gameplay. It is a hallway. It is lockout heavy. It is probably one of the more limited maps in terms of weapon viability. Everything about it feels awful. Right behind it is the bowl map itself of Scorch Zones with the worst zones layout deal. It's an incredibly difficult zone to cap. The top mid can be very annoying. If you ever push past the bridge, it's basically awful. If you are retaking, you are dropping in and you are never going back because it is basically impossible to walk backward. And despite the size of the map, every option you have feels incredibly predictable. The bottom right side that you drop in is like the only redeeming quality and the tower on top mid is like, okay. So it's a little bit better than Eel Tail. All right, this map barely made it one tier up, but Brine Water Springs would be my pick for the third worst map in the game. This one is the most annoying in terms of how it affects backline weapons. It is extremely favored toward chargers, as well as chargers have some of the easiest position I've ever seen. They basically just use a single spot. The drops on the left and right are horrible in terms of your movement options. The only positive and the only reason this is really a tier up is it is a bit more fight heavy since the map is smaller. You do have to lock out by pushing ahead a little bit, so you can't just sit and zone the whole game. And there is some decent retake options with the right side. Still horrible, but definitely a tier above the other things we are dealing with. Next up is Undertow Spillway, a map that's a lot better in pretty much all of the other modes, but I think is the worst in zones. Once again, we have a map that's very awkward because the left side retreat route is an uninkable ramp and the other side is a sponge and the right side has nothing. On top of that, the two small zones mean that it can be really prone to stalling depending on the strategies you have. The glass is very awkward and the main problem is the hourglass middle of the stage. This is the most small and cramped mid out of any map in the game, and you're basically forced to go through it. It is horrible. I do not enjoy it at all. I think it's two teams that are either having a staring contest trying to get through mid, one team finally gets full control, and then they lock out pretty much the entire rest of the game, which just isn't great. Next up would be Hammerhead Bridge. This map does have some of its fans, but once again, I'm not really a fan of it. Again, this is another map. I've said this a lot. You have one way to retreat with the ramp. The left side is a drop and the right side is literally non-accessible coming out of your base. This map has some of the worst spawn locks in the game. You are in such a condensed and tiny area when you're trying to retake your own plat. It's an absolute pain to just try to go anywhere when you're locked out, but I guess on zones it's a little bit better. And this map has one of the only positives out of any of the bad stages, which is the middle area is actually pretty fun to fight in. So this is the first time I've really had something positive to say. The mid area is cool, but everything else is horrible. Sturgeon Shipyard is in D tier. This is, again, another map with a lot of the same patterns. When you're trying to retreat out of your drop area, there is only an uninkable ramp to go backward into. At least there is a defensive sponge as well, though it is very hard to use without death given the enemy team will be on snipe a lot. You do have a top right side to try to use to retake that is actually pretty decent, but you still have to drop off there. Left side is a horrible route to get into mid. It's better that it's there, but it's awful. You have to pull people away basically. The spinners and snipe create very easy lockouts if the enemy team ever push up that far. It's just a bit of a problem on all sides. It's another map that's very lockout heavy. Heavy, that's very easy to just win very quickly. It has an interesting gimmick with the spinners, but it definitely just does not really work in competitive play. 
the last stage in D tier, a map that I have come to think slightly more positive of, even if it's still bad, is Wahoo World. Wahoo World does still have the retreat problem, but out of every map we've mentioned so far, this one actually has the best one. There are not one, but two slightly inconvenient ways to get all the way back to your bridge. There is actually three routes to get into middle, two of them are trash, but at least they're there. That's really all I can say about the map. It's still very lockout heavy. It still has the pole, which is hilarious. The underneath area is still very easy to patrol. It's still a bad map, but I wouldn't say it's one of the absolute worst, which is probably more of a sad thing than a positive thing. Yes, everyone has said it that this means mincemeat is in C tier. I have honestly grown to not hate mincemeat as much. I still don't think it's a good stage by any means, but I think it's become kind of like the camp triggerfish of this game. It's basically become the counterpick zones map to run really niche and weird strategies like Tentabrella stuff, for instance, just to name one very prominent example. And I think it's a little bit better. It still has horrible retreat routes, don't get me wrong. It's still pretty damn bad in that regard. But I think it does have some degree of interesting strategies. I think the zone actually flows pretty well. I don't think it's that lockout heavy, though it does still have a lot of the drops problem. So yeah, I expect this will be my second most controversial take of the tier list. I still think Mincemeat is a bad map, but I don't think it's as bad as people say it is. And I'll just say it this way, these maps, and with the team knocking out really early, significantly more often than this one does. Up next is Inkblot Zones, possibly the most overrated map mode in the entire game. Inkblot Zones is one-way drop hell, whether it's getting out of your base, getting on the flank, getting into mid, all of it feels awful. It is exceptionally easy to lock out in, there are some very annoying positions, it is at least a little bit more open, but that is probably the best thing I can say about it. This map is much better on the other modes, and this to me is just one-way drop simulator, so. I said that Mincemeat is the second most controversial take. I know my Bluefin review hasn't come out yet at the time of making this recording, so chat's gonna go a little insane, but Bluefin's actually here as well. First off, Bluefin is very awkward to move on in comparison to Splatoon 1 for two reasons. One, two of the walls were turned into elevators, which take two seconds to go up, and you can see when they're coming up, which means it's incredibly difficult to actually use them. And two, the walls on the sides of the map are now unpaintable on the back of them. So this means when you're climbing up the walls, you can't climb the walls and not be seen anymore. Everyone's gonna see you climbing the wall or going up the elevator. So anytime you're trying to push up in a plat, your push options are awful and you're probably going to die. I think that if the back of the walls were paintable and if the elevator were like twice as fast, that alone would bump this up like two tiers. The other issue is that they are still a bit of bad drops. Like if you are pushing and you're committing to dropping off your own plat, you are still kind of stuck and can't back off. Like you can try to climb the wall or go up the two second long elevator, but they're not very good retreat options. The good news is compared to a lot of these maps, you're not dropping into one death pit, but there are two death pits that are connected to each other. So people are a little bit more spread out, you're a bit more likely to get away with it, and there's a bit more flow of gameplay. On top of that, this map has the moving zone, which due to how lockout favored this map is, actually adds a bit more defender's advantage, because now the zone is closer to the defending team than the attackers, which works in this map's favor. The only other negative I can say is that the spawn region being on one side means rotating and flanking is way slower than it was in Splatoon 1, and that's unfortunately a bit of a problem. This map has gotten some improvements, but for now, this is where I think it stands. Really fun, but a few small tweaks are needed to make it a good competitive stage. The biggest difference in a casual versus competitive ranking. Like, Casually, for me, this map is like here. If I were to say like my personal enjoyment of the map, this is where it would go. I have a lot of fun on this map. If I roll it in solo, I enjoy it. But competitive wise, it's here. And that's what this list is. So it goes there. That's also why Mincemeat is higher, for instance. Mincemeat in a pure casual perspective is probably down here. It's interesting when you build team comps around it and that bumps it up. Uh, next up is the other fun map of the series, Flounder Heights. A map that should have been way more, but goddamn, taking off that entire right side of the map and spawn tunnel hurt like hell. Getting out of your base is still legitimately a problem, and on top of that, a lot of the best specials for retaking kind of suck here, so it's a bit lockout heavy. 
If we were to have it be as open as it was in Splatoon 1, this would easily be the best stage in the entire game. But unfortunately, the entire right side is incredibly limited, and on top of that, the bottom right tunnel on the spawn is gone. Bring them back, and maybe take away the left side wall as well while we're at it. And the last map in this tier is Manta Maria Splat Zones. This one still has a bit of a retreating problem in terms of the right side of the map, but it's at least a little bit better. I think the gimmick of the map in terms of its structure is pretty cool. I think that the zones work pretty okay. And as a whole, the middle of the map functions fine, but it does have the Splatoon 2 problem of, guess what, you are going through mid no matter what in order to do anything. You have to fight through mid. We are Splatoon 2 map design. And then on top of that, it is still a bit lockout heavy because the right side is terrible to retake on. If you ever retake only from the right side in a competitive setting, you're going to lose. You basically have to get your own bunker, which makes the map's gameplay very linear. This map works a lot better when the right side is actually somewhere you can move between, and Zones is unfortunately the worst offender in this. So yeah, C tier has a lot of maps with redeemable qualities. A lot of people like the structure of Inkblot, there's a lot of interesting comps and things competitive-wise for counterpicking, Bluefin is very unique in terms of playstyle, Flounder has a lot of options in mid, and Manta Maria has a cool layout. But unfortunately, many of these stages still fall flat. Alright, first up, Ship Shape Cargo Co. Barely making it into the decent category. This map's main issue is it is very lockout heavy, and I'm going to feel like a broken record, but there is still a good bit of one-way drops. This isn't as bad, the middle of the map has a tunnel you can walk through and then die to Trizuka, and the right side has a sponge you can pray to god that people don't shoot you from. On top of that, the map is actually decently wide, except they forgot an entire left side of the map on retake, so you do have a few more options. There's some interesting stuff like ink jetting on the sign on the left side, which is pretty cool. So it isn't as lockout heavy as we initially thought, and it does have some unique structure, but for the most part, it's still a little bit too lockout favored for my taste. Next up is Crab Leg. Crab Leg is a lot better than Ship Shape when we're talking about all modes, but when we're going for zones only, unfortunately this is just not the layout that lets it shine. It really needs a way to back up on the right side and middle, and you can only go back on the left side over grates. It makes up for it a little bit by having an absolutely giant mid with many different locations that can favor a lot of range values, an interesting gimmick in terms of the amount of grates you can use, and the zone is fairly decent. So, overall it's an okay map, but my god, you add a few more ways to go forward and back, and this skyrockets up the list. Barnacle and Dime Splat Zones. This is a map where its main problem is retaking to get all the way to the zone, even if you're doing it properly, takes a really long time. You need to get your top right side, then you need to get your little plat area where the backline likes to set up, and then you need to get your bunker, and then you need to get zone. There are some times where I see a team as a few too many people down at like 30 to 35 points remaining, and then I just know they're not gonna retake because it's gonna take them too long to make it to the zone. That is really the main problem. Again, this is a stage where, like Ship Shape, if there was simply a left side of the map present, it would probably be significantly better, but there just is no left side. I will say the stacks on this are really nice to fight in though, so whenever the stage does get to the area in mid, it's pretty cool, but whenever it gets outside of it, you tend to feel the stage's problems. Finally, in the B tier is Humpback Pump Track, another map that likes its one-way drops, and so does Barnacle, I just didn't really talk about it because god, I'm tired of it, but in this case, yeah, Humpback is entirely one-way drops. The difference here is that Humpback is very wide, so there is a wide range of approach options, and you can use the far right side to try and flank or even go far left, so the map is a lot more open by Splatoon 3 standards, and unlike Splatoon 2, it doesn't have V-Jets sitting back and getting 20 missiles a game painting the zone, so it's a lot more tolerable, still not great. Alright, and now we start to get to some of the pretty solid stages, things that you start to see in tournament play quite a decent bit. First up to me is Hagglefish Splat Zone. So Hagglefish is officially the peak of the hallway design stage we have in this game, where there are three routes, most of them are a bit sh**, but you can still kind of use them. There's the tents, which are kind of unique gimmick-wise, it's not too lockout heavy, specials feel pretty powerful here due to the amount of high ground you can use it from, and there's like a decent variety of places fights take place, pushing up a bit is okay, so yeah. It's like at the bottom of my I can accept this being in tournament map list tier. Museum would go next, and honestly I will compare this a lot with Humpback in terms of yes, it is still pretty much all one-way drops, but in this case there is a huge variety. 
This map especially benefits from the right route out of spawn. You can literally get behind the enemy's team mid in like three seconds. That is huge. Plat is a little bit lockout and attacker favored, but it isn't too bad. You can still retake it using the left side of your spawn, so it's not too bad. There is a lot of natural places to push in, and you can still go from a variety of spaces. On top of that, Museum has the spinners, which are an awesome gimmick that really enhance how the stage feels and adds a bit of variety, and stage gimmicks are always cool. Last on this tier is Umami Ruins Splat Zones, which is a map I've come to like a little bit, and really it's just because it is a fairly easy map to move in. You can pretty much move forward and backward rather freely, it is the only map where the double zones actually kind of work for the map because they're not super easy to contest, but still allow teams to retake half of mid to be able to contest and draw out a fight. Top mid isn't too oppressive. I think the bottom left area isn't too bad in terms of a drop. There's still decent options there. The rail is nice for really fast openings onto the left side. It is still a bit lockout heavy in terms of if they push all the way over to where your little statue is, but it's not too bad. And honestly, this one's only gone up over time. All right, and that brings us to our top three where we start to get to the maps that I would say are like comfortably good. I like some of these, but I feel confident saying like these are good stages for Mako zones first. I think that Mako spot zones is pretty fun. It is, again, one where drops are a little bit of a problem, but not too bad. You can still get out on the right side. The left side is still pretty open to be able to move on. The left side of your spawn is really good for retaking your stack. There's a good amount of options on the stage. The variety in terms of unique locations to fight on is interesting with the stacks and how that kind of allows the flow of the game to be a bit different. It is still a little bit lockout heavy for my likes and I think that the right side of your map outside of spawn still needs to be improved, but it's pretty solid. Mahi Zones is a little bit better though, and I would say it's better before the rework, but the rework definitely bumped it up a good bit, though not enough to be a tier higher. Mainly because I do think the spawn region is still a bit of a problem. I would have liked to see the right side be expanded a little bit more in terms of bringing back that old Splatoon 1 route under the snipe. The mid is great now. The mid is very open and has a lot of different options, but in terms of getting out of your base, while it's still way more variety than most of the stuff down here, it still could be a lot better. So I think it's okay as a whole. It's a very solid stage. I think the options in spawn are solid, but could be better. And I think the majority of the map does flow very well. And yes, that means the brand new ramen stage we've gotten is easily the only X tier map in the game. They absolutely cooked with ramen. It is in fact that good. The tunnels are really cool. The variety of routes, the amount of paintable walls you can use, the varied amount of defensive positions, the spots for specials are all good, there's a decent amount of variety in your spawn. Like, the only thing I can critique is a lack of sponge on the bottom left side. It just legitimately is a very, very solid stage all around, and I cannot wait to see this one in Mapless. We have needed a W like this, and this is an amazing stage that I can definitely vouch for. But with that being said, that is the entire tier list series completed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Again, it's a competitive thing. I totally understand for stuff like Flounder or Bluefin being better casually, Mincemeat being worse, stuff like that. But in terms of where I think the stages are competitively, this is where it would stand in my eyes from best to worst. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all later.